Hello there. Well, it is a nice Wednesday afternoon. I'm just enjoying it. Well, actually, it's evening. It's almost seven o'clock. But um, I had some. Uh, I had a fellow by the name of Mr. Hyde seventy six hundred um, make a video contending my uh, reason why I call myself I speak Bible English. Well, I'm not gonna really answer that because um. Um, I think there are a lot of um, uh, reasons why I name myself that, my, my channel that, and um, there are even more um, uh, uh, ways I can show that, um, or I mean, just plain English, everyday English, that the words he was um, bringing up that he guaranteed were not in use today. Of course, that's a bunch of. Uh, Really, it's just not true. And there are a lot of words that he mentioned or said in this video that are used today. Well, I deleted the other video because I just really didn't want to argue some points that he was bringing up. I thought they were pretty silly, you know, to argue them. And, um, you know, things, even things about the Bible. But I do want to address the things that are concerning um, the... Um, uh, about the periods of the Antiochian and the, the uh, Alexandrian uh, periods there of the Bible manuscripts and papyri witnesses what have you. So I'm going to do so from um, Gibbs' un Understandable History of the Bible. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a whole chapter of chapter 12 actually. It's called The Great Manuscript Heist. And it's how that all the manuscripts that we had showing the Textus Receptus, the majority text, uh, the Universal text, the Alexandrian, excuse me, the Antioch and Byzantine text, you know, pretty much what it is, how it got depleted, how it kind of disappeared from the scene in order to um, um, encourage the um, the others like the Alexandrian and what they did was they took it and split that off and you know promoted more the Egyptian and the Western but anyway I'm gonna read all that but um just because I was looking at the information that he put on there and everything and I was like that don't make sense I mean I mean some of it did but it just I don't know where he got a source from I don't know how he did what he did, and he didn't have uh, as to who made the chart or whether he made the chart or what have you. So I'm going to just going to address um, what Sam Gip put in here, and I know his facts are reliable. So I, I don't know about Mr. Hyde. So I don't know where he got this from, but I'm going by what I can understand to be facts. And I talk to Sam on Twitter every once in a while. And I don't think he would just pull it out of the thin air, you know. But anyway, this is chapter 12 again of that book. And that's how much I, I, I got to go. <laughs> this is much. Anyway, here's 13. The Great Manuscript Nice, let's see. And then there's chapter 13, Considerations, Conclusions, and Vindication. This guy kind of charts back here too. So, I might be appendixes and all that stuff what I might do is just um yeah uh, whenever I read it and everything I don't know I might just go by the charts it's kind of charts in here and everything like this right here Let's see hmm. but the best thing is um, about that is um he um, explains all the charts, so I don't know, it might be best to just read it first and then go by what the charts look like in the um, appendixes. Okay, so let's get on to it, shall we? Uh, let's see here. Can't find my page. Where was I at? Here we go. Oh. Alright, the Greek manuscript heist. There are over, well over 5,500 manuscripts of the New Testament extant today. It is a well-known fact that the vast majority of these support the King James Bible. In fact, the Greek Manuscript Authority, they had that with me, and for modern versions is seldom more than five or ten corrupt Egyptian autographs. 
This is overwhelming testimony on behalf of the King James Bible uh, has been a source, a source spot for modern scholarships for decades. Like a greedy nephew hoping to inherit his rich uncle's estate, scholars have eyed this manuscript support for the King James Bible for years with a jealous eye wondering how they can take possession of it. They have been totally unable to do it, but they have finally discovered a way to it. Um, at least diminish the huge number of manuscript witnesses in favor of the authorized version. Oh, yeah, also, too. I made, um, oh, I know you know some of that chicken, boy. He's, I, I got some chicken over here that I brought back from, um, from going out. And he's like, oh, it's a chicken. This book here. I had some videos of it, uh, but I decided to, rather than read the whole thing, just to kind of like do like a flyover, what I call a flyover, take the camera and kind of scan over the pages. That way somebody can um, just, um, you know, uh, casually read it on their own. Uh, this is from 1930. It's um, 86 years old. It's by George Wilkinson, our authorized Bible Vindicated. And uh, it's a great read. Um, I was on chapter four. And um need to just catch up from where I was and keep on reading. But yeah, I intend to just kind of use my camera and just go down kind of real slow. That way uh, somebody can just read it for page, page for page. Instead of me reading it and me butchering the words that my name would imply. Also, for a quick like, I do have this, the translators revived. So it's about a lot of translators and everything and godly men that they were and so forth and so on and uh, also in the same book that I'm holding now well I have in my lab here Sam Gipp shows how King James was not what people thought he was he hated the feminism not that he hated the people but he didn't he was a man's man he was a manly man he had nothing to do with the way people thought he you know the feminine or whatever he even wrote to his son to be manly you know Henry, a Basilicon Doran, but of course Henry died and Charles became king. Of course we know he was assassinated. Anyway, let's see here. As an embezzler slowly pilfers money from, from victims, his victims' bank account, the overwhelming manuscript authority in favor of the King, of the king James Bible has slowly been reduced through trickery and treachery. You know, I believe that's the same. That's the, that's like the same thing they're going to do with the um, with the votes uh, here in, in the next several months. You know, in November they're going to try to rig it and get Hillary to win. He even talks about her in this book, and this was from years ago when he wrote it, whenever she was on um, Bill Clinton was president. And it's nothing changed with Hillary. She's still tricky, conniving. All right. It says, this diluting of the huge manuscript pool supporting the authorized version came to my attention during a television debate I took part in 1995. A television program was the John Ankerberg Show. There were eight participants, not including John Ankerberg himself, who had to ride to the rescue of his Bible correcting cohorts numerous times in a debate. They were divided into two groups as follows. The pro King James group, Thomas Strauss, Dr. Thomas Strauss, Dr. Joseph Chambers, Sam Gibb, uh, the anti-King James group, Dr. Kenneth Barker, head of the NIV translation, Dr. Art Farstad, head of the NKG translation committee, Dr. Donald Wilkinson of the NASV translation committee, Dr. Dan Walls, professor, professor of the textual criticism in Dallas Theological Seminary, James White, all-around Bible head, all back, Bible hater all around bad guy. <laughs> this, this debate was foisted as an objective examination of both sides of the issue, but then little joke was exposed during the very first but the issue but sides of the issue but that little joke was exposed during the fir very first commercial break, which was an advertisement for the John Ankerberg NIV study Bible. As I mentioned earlier, Ankerberg regularly had to step in and rescue his fellow Bible correctors. But something was very interesting, something very interesting happened during the program which I picked up on but could not comment on, Dr. Dan Wallace, I guess. 
held up the, a chart showing the three basic families of the manuscripts and how their testimony lined up. Hmm. There was the famous standalone D, which did indeed stand alone. Then there was Alexandrian manuscripts, which back the most, which back most modern versions. Then there was the column of the Antiochian or Byzantine manuscripts, which stood behind the King James Bible. To my shock and surprise, this column was way too short. I knew immediately what had happened, but couldn't say anything because I couldn't prove my charge. It was obvious that someone had found a way to reclassify Antiochian manuscripts out of the Antiochian column. But how did they, how did they, how they did it and where they have put them, I didn't know. Thus began the search to identify both the embezzler and the stash where the manuscripts were hidden. I did not know it would take seven years to ferret out the facts, but I finally found them and will share them with you now. The Three Families for many years, scholars believed there were indeed three distinct families of scripture. These are called text types. These three text types were defined as Byzantine and Yachin. This is the universal text testified by the vast majority of extant manuscripts. The Textus Receptus comes from these, from this text type. Alexandrian. This is the local text manufactured in Alexandria, Egypt, and divinely ignored by both God and his church. There is no historical evidence that this, this text was ever accepted or used by the church. This text exists in only a small group of manuscripts, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus being the primary examples, yet it is the parent of practically every new Greek text and every new Bible translation since 1881. When Westcott and Hort forced it on the committee of the Revised Version, and that's exactly what they did, forced it on them. <clears throat> the Alexandrian text type is distinguished by its tendency to subtract portions of scripture from the Byzantine text. The Western type. The supposed Western text type was noted for its tendency to add to the Byzantine text. But its its primary example is Unicol Manuscript D, also known as by the name Codex Bize Cantabrigensis. Cantabrigensis. The witnesses for this text are type are so few that it has been determined that D is simply a abstract portion production of the third third century and does not testify to the existence of a separate textual family. Like, Zen, like the Alexandrian text type, it is not valid uh, witness of the text of the original autographs. It is not a valid witness. The extant Bible manuscripts in excess of 5,500 or 5,500 are now divided into three classes or families which are very similar to the above three. Byzantine the vast majority of manuscripts, Alexandrian, about 2% of the extant manuscripts, D, less than 10 extant manuscripts. This might make this about 20 minutes, 20 minute videos. The Byzantine or Antiochian text was dealt a serious blow during the Diocletian persecutions. Now, to Mr. Hyde 7600, that's exactly what happened in your graphs there, the um, um, because of the persecution, just like the later persecutions of the uh, uh, 16th century, um, Bibles were burnt. The 17th century too, Bibles were burnt. The the people were killed. Bibles were burnt and everything else. And it was till not till after uh, the persecution stopped or there was a break that um, the uh, originals were copied out. And that they would put out more, more and more copies of the same thing, copies among copies. Let's see here. But once the persecution was lifted, that text rebounded dramatic, dramatically. That's what I just said. 
This is evident by the huge body of witnesses dating from the 5th century on, and that's what you showed in your graphs. And the, in the three parts of extant manuscripts, because that had a lot to do with Diocletian before Constantine became emperor. So, um, he was persecuting Christians and things were being destroyed and burnt. Unicles, papyrus, and minuscules, the vast body of the witnesses contained the Byzantine texts. The Alexandrian, I'll get it out. The Alexandrian text type surged briefly in the 3rd and 4th centuries while Antioch was being hammered by Diocletian. But this figure can be deceiving just because there may be more 3rd or 4th century manuscripts of this type today does not mean that there were more Alexandrian text manuscripts than the Antiochian in the actual 4th century. Now you can compare that to like a little statement that Hillary Clinton made earlier. She said that uh, her approval rating was 66% whenever she became, I don't get out of the um, um, Secretary of State. But that wasn't every person in America. See what I'm saying? That wasn't everybody in America. That was only a fraction of people who took the John poll. So think about it. If every person in America uh, gave their approval for Hillary Clinton, it will probably be um, half of that, 33, you know, if every single person in America. I don't know that for sure, but that's like the same, um, uh, you can kind of match that with what this is, because there, all the Alexandrian texts, sorry, all the um, Antiochian texts weren't um, gathered and found as opposed to all the Alexandrian. So, anyway, they excelled today because the Antiochian witnesses were destroyed while the Christianity was being suppressed, but then reappeared rapidly afterwards when the persecution ended and the church could again obtain the true text from Antioch. Then the Byzantine text quickly resumed resumed its resumed rather its supremacy. I'm watching a crow or a blackbird or whatever it is wall around the snow. Okay. Let's see what the name of this show is. How about that herb? I know I'm gonna focus on where oh wild Russia, Siberia. That's on Animal Planet. Like watching Animal Planet. Uh, anyway, the text D is found and is unique to only a handful of witnesses in the third or two fifth centuries and never flourished. It is an irrelevant witness in the request of the original text. There are three kinds of manuscripts extant today: unicles, minuscules. Many of these are cursives and papyri. These make up the body of some 5,500 witnesses. The actual debate rage, rages over only a few hundred of these. The Unicles and Papyri. The Unicles and Papyri. About 5,000 of the extant witnesses are the minuscules, both cursive and printed, but are overwhelmingly of the Byzantine or Antioch text type. That narrows the battle down to about 500 manuscripts. Of the testimonies of the Unicles and Papyri, here's how the witnesses line up. In the following graph and tables, the three text types are shown as follows. Class A, the Antiochian text type. Class B, the Alexandrian text type. Class C, the D text type. Okay, so I'm going to show that here. If I can, when I cut the camera off. And you can see it, maybe. I don't know. Okay, there's no light. Sorry. Maybe you can see it. I don't know. But you can see Class A, Antioch, and has way more uh, witnesses from the 3rd century on down to the 10th century. Uh... The third century is one compared to Antioch Alexandrian is one. Uh, class D is one. Uh, the fourth century, 19 manuscripts uh, for Antioch. Um, Alexandrian is three manuscripts for Alexandrian. Sorry, Class B. 
and none for the class D in the 4th century. Now the 5th century are 42 manuscripts. Uh, Alexandrian is one manuscript. Class D is two manuscripts. 6th century is 70 manuscripts for class A. None for the Alexandrian and none for class D. C, actually. Um, 7th century shows 24 for class A, Antiochian, and one for Alexandrian class B and none for class C for um, for D. The 8th century is 24 manuscripts for class A, that's Antiochian, none for class B, that's Alexandrian, and none for class C or D, uh, which is um, the D text. Uh, the 9th century shows 46 manuscript witnesses for Class A Antiochian, none for Class B Alexandrian, and none for Class C D. Uh, the 10th century shows 17 for Class A Antiochian, 0 for Class B Anti Alexandrian, and none for Class C D. So, in all total, for um, the Unical Witnesses by a century, from the 3rd century to the 10th century, there are 243 Antiochian witnesses, 6 Alexandrian witnesses, and 3 D witnesses for the Unical Witnesses by the century. Okay, the Unical, as you can see, it says after the 3rd century, the number of Antiochian manuscripts increased dramatically. This was due to the end of Diocletian persecution. Not made this just the 23 minutes. Alexandria peaked in the 4th century and then soon disappeared. D did not do much better. From the 3rd century to the 10th century, there are a total of 243 manuscripts which contain the Antiochian text type. The same time um, period, a total of 6 to, of the Alexandrian text type and only 3 of the D. It is plain to see the vast number of unical witnesses testify to the acceptance by the church of the Antiochian text type as authentic. They had no use for the text type, the text from Alexandria, Egypt. Now, I'm going to start the next video with the papyri part. So I'm going to stop right here and go from there.